Welcome everybody. Today I wanted to show you something really pretty simple. I am uh, using a dynamically de generated dungeon um, for a game that I'm working on. And one of the things I wanted to do was uh, have a debug uh, output uh, showing you the path from the start to the finish of the map. And uh, I, I did that using a spline. So if we look at the overhead here, you can see that my spline is traveling all the way through the entire map. Let me show you real quickly. So in this case, you can see the line here. Let me see if it looks better lit. Eh, not too much. Um, but this uh, here's the start. And you can see this faint line going through here and finally making it all the way down to the end. So what I did um, in order to do this, I simply used a spline component. And uh, I'm going to show you real quickly how I did that. But it's a really nice way that assuming you have a fixed set of points that you want to run a uh, spline component mesh along, then it, it really makes it super easy. So let me show you the uh, blueprint. So we'll go down uh, here. And um, the first thing is, this is just the material I'm using. Uh, this is not a very uh, amazing material, but just in case you wanted to see uh, the material that I'm using for my spline component, this is it. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is, this is the spline mesh component that I'm using. So this is the mesh that gets drawn along the spline that I generated. And uh, you can see that it is oriented with the Z axis uh, is, as the forward axis in this case. So I'll show you why that's important in just a minute. The next thing I wanted to show you is just the the main uh, the main event, which is I created a spline component on my uh, actor that I I have uh, the actor that I'm using. It's called Procedural Level, and it maintains a lot of other information that I'm using uh, to draw the rest of the level. But the important part for the spline is here. So what you do is you add a spline component. You just come up here, type spline, right? And um, what you need to add is this one right here. So there's two types. This is a spline component. This is a spline mesh component. We'll create these dynamically. This is the one that you want, spline. And then um, what I did was, This is the part where I'm adding spline points to my spline. Now, your use case will be different than mine, but essentially this path here that you see is tied to the dynamically generated level that I created. And so my path um, will be different than what yours is. But what you need to do is take whatever points you want to generate a spline through and then from your spline do add spline point. So you build up your entire spline by adding all these points. Um, if the coordinate space is local or world, you need to set that. Mine were all in local space. And then this uh, update spline, I believe is a performance optimization you could make that if you did not want to update the spline on every point that you added, you could only set this on the very last one. So all the initial ones would not update the spline. The last part is, this is how you actually take the spline path that you added up here, right? When you're looping through your array of points. So you added all the points in, and now what you need to do is you need to create spline mesh components along that path. And the way you do that is you iterate from the index zero 
to the splines number of spline points so how many ever points you added before and you subtract two the reason we do that is the components go between two points so a spline mesh component has you know it needs a start point and an end point and then you have one in between there so you subtract one for the the zero index array and then you subtract one more for the um because we're only going to go up to the second to last point once you do that we take the index here and we're going to do uh, add spline mesh component we are going to actually this may be automatically attaching I thought I was attaching it myself but it looks like maybe uh, maybe I'll set this to manual because I think I'm actually doing the attachment that's a good question it was working without it so I'll start with that but um, so what you do is you say add mesh component and then um, I was setting the static mesh here and it generates an error and instead what I found to work better is if you look on the right side over here um, the for the spline mesh component this add function you can set the static mesh right here so this is the mesh that I'm going to be using and one important thing is this forward axis I set mine to Z because Z is the the forward like of a pipe so mine was facing upward so I say use the upward axis as the forward axis uh, I tried doing this and it was throwing some errors about uh, setting a static mesh when the mobility was not static um, and I just tried something different and it worked by you know just setting it over here which is easier you have to click on that node so the next thing is you attach the component uh, this is the spline mesh component um, I am attaching it to one of my the scene component of my actor I'm not using any sockets or any of this and then all that I do is I set the start and the end point for the spline mesh component so if we go back if you look real close here you can see that this is one section and you need to set the start and the end points for each of those in order for your spline mesh component to know where to align itself so going back here how we get those positions for the start position and the tangent is we use a function called get location and tangent at spline point and what you're doing is you're passing the index of the point um, that we retrieved from the index of our for loop okay so you basically pass that in uh, I'm using local space again and the output gives us the location and the tangent of that point and then we simply add one call the exact same function again but we add one to our index so that's the next one down the line we get that point and tangent and then it will set the start and end points for that particular spline mesh component so once you run through all of that you end up with this and um, that's really about it everybody I have one little tip that I'm going to share with you now about the material so I just wanted to show everybody if you ever have a problem where your spline mesh components are not using the material that you assign them so if you look here this is a spline mesh component that I'm using for debugging and I normally set it to a very uh, uh, transparent 
uh, yellow. Let me show you that uh, material. So here's the material that I set up. And what you see is everything looks good, should be working. But if you come down to the, uh, if you click on the material itself and you search for spline, you'll see that there is a Boolean flag that's called used with spline meshes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check that. I'm gonna hit apply. And then I'm gonna save that. And then when we go back to our, uh, when we go back to our spline mesh, now you can see that material is actually being used. So that's just a quick tip for you about spline meshes and uh, that's it. I wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this kind of content, please hit subscribe and the like button. Have a great day and a safe day. Bye.